What's going on guys, Riveru here. Before we start showing off all the new stuff, such as the water temple and everything that's in my hotbar, I'd like to say that you have a chance of being in this map via the Scarecrow song. So if you're interested in that, there's a video explaining it all in the description below. I've only gotten like three or four submissions, so you have a pretty good chance of making it in. And let's just get to it. First, we must drain the lake. So I guess we'll just start with the iron boots. If we go into adventure and go into the water, it forces us down. And if we take them off, it takes us back up. They're a little finicky when trying to climb up one block high things, so you have to face directly forward where you're going. And you can't completely just hold space, otherwise it keeps forcing you back down. If we are underwater, you'll notice that there is actually a drowning timer now and we can turn that off by wearing the Zora tunic. And you'll also notice that while I am drowning, I did remove the texture for the air bubbles, so you only have this to see how much time you have left before you drown. Next up, there's a new type of interface for the fairy bow. Depending on the type of arrow, which you have normal, fire, ice, and light, which I have yet to do, they will be separated by their specific type of arrow, so once you select that arrow, it'll use that type. So if we shoot the fire arrow, you'll see that we use up some of our magic meter. If we just switch to a normal arrow, it works just normally. And if we run out of arrows, we are not able to pull out the bow anymore. Alright, let's head into the temple. Shoot the hookshot spot, or not. And there we go. And we enter. And here we are. The water temple. So first off, we'll go ahead and go down here and into this little tunnel over here. And as we go, you're going to notice a lot of different changes that I had to do for this temple. One of those changes being this jump cut scene, which is surrounded by glass rather than barriers. Which, if I show what the barriers look like underwater, it looks really weird and blech. You'll also notice behind her that the door is very weird looking with the water. That's the only thing I'm not so happy with in this dungeon. Everything else I managed to find a pretty good solution, but that's the only thing I couldn't really find a good way to fix. Goodbye! And here we have our first new enemy, the Spike. So we can either wait for them to stop rolling and turn into rocks, or hit them ourselves, and they will turn into just normal rocks. They will damage you eventually, and I believe if you have a shield, it does also block it. We'll find something pretty cool later on, but right now I'll go ahead and say that the maps are now replaced with just normal items, such as arrows and such, just because there's not a really good way to make a map of the entire dungeon. There's too many layers and levels, and the size of things are way too big to fit into one map, and it's there's just too many issues, so I've changed it to just having normal items. So let's go ahead and play Zelda's Lullaby at this water layer thing, and it takes the water down. Here we have a cool little torch puzzle. Uh, we can either use the fire arrows to light these, or shoot an arrow through the torch to light the other one. If you shoot it too fast, it doesn't react in time. Kind of an issue, but I don't really know how to fix that. And here we have another new enemy. One of the last, because there's only like two new enemies in this dungeon. So once you're close enough to them, they'll open their mouth to be vulnerable, but then turn around and attack you. And if we hit them in time, they die in one hit. Pretty simple. And here's a chest with a small key. Another challenge I had to face with the water temple was that if you fill this area with water, the chest becomes waterlogged, and if you fill it with air, the chest remains waterlogged, so there's just water everywhere. Since there's not a way to just fill the chest here with another chest, because it'll end up deleting the items, I ended up just making it so that it moves the chest outside here when there's water, and then back in once the air is filled. It's pretty different from the game, but honestly not as much as you'd think, because you can't actually open chests underwater, even with the iron boots on. Next up, we'll just show off this little optional room over here. The only thing that's actually good about this area is the gold Skultula, which I have not implemented yet. We are getting pretty close though to where everything's built so I can actually start filling all the Skultulas in at the same time. So over here we just have a little pressure plate which fills up the water, and we can hook shot over to this, and we have some Tektites which are I found very annoying when I first tried to record this. If you're not careful, you might not notice the switch that's behind the statue, which opens up the gate over here. And that's it from over here. The first time I recorded this as well, I actually 
got completely lost because I forgot that there's a key over in this area. If we push this block, it'll go over here, and we can swim on through. And we have another new mechanic, which is the water elevator thing. We hit the switch, and it'll go up. We can ride it up, and jump across- Oh yeah. <laughs> kind of had a feeling that might happen. Don't you just hate it when the enemies work the way they're supposed to? Alright, in this room we have a little whirlpool. Not that you can really see it, but it does give you the effect. We're gonna go ahead and put our iron boots on just at the right time. And swim up here. And you'll notice that there's a switch in the dragon's mouth. If we hit it, and hookshot on over here, you won't notice it until it comes back, but there is a iron gate here. And here is another key. We can hit the switch to get back, and that's it from this room. Also, can I just say how much work it took to make this hookshot at least somewhat work? Which it works really well now, at least. But before, holy cow, there were so many issues. Because there's so many different type of target positions that this can be in. One where you hook on and you are able to get on top, or one that's on the ceiling so you only fall, or one that's just straight up on a wall and you just sit beside it. So let's go ahead and use a key and open up this door over here in the middle, and use the hookshot to get up here. And raise the water level to 2. And we go down here to reveal another key, I believe. Not before fighting some enemies. So this is like a little enemy gauntlet right here. We hit the switch and come down the enemies. They're kind of pathetic, but they kind of are in the original game too, so, you know. Small key. And we shall continue on. Oh, I guess I should mention that these are spikes here, so if you stand on them, then you will deal damage. And here we are. Second floor, so if we want to go back into that middle room, not that there's really too much in there. Um, we just gotta shoot an arrow through this fire torch and open it up. Fire arrows would have also worked. Or even using them fire. The next point of interest is over here. Normally there's stingers over here, but the water level isn't risen rosen. But the water level isn't high enough so that they can't actually spawn. And we have another switch with another water elevator, except this one works a little bit differently. We want to hit the switch and open the chest, which reveals the compass, which duplicates itself. I forgot to fix that, but at least that's the first issue we've come across that I forgot to fix. Everything else has been working pretty well so far. So the compass. If we right click it, it shows us how many chests are remaining, which I am really happy with. I'm glad I could at least make the compass work, even though the map was pretty much a failed attempt. So at least half of the dungeon items work, pretty much. So we'll go ahead and see that this changes to 4 once we collect another chest. But next, we're going to head off into this room over here, which is just a way to increase the water level. I don't know if our hookshot can reach that far. Nope, so we'll just use an arrow and head on up. And here we are at the third and final water level. We play it, and we can get through. And now that we have the water temple up back to the normal place, with an extra small key, we can go into this room. And we're getting pretty close to the mini boss. So if we get onto this platform, you'll notice that we kind of slid onto it. So if we fall down here, you'll notice that we're sliding down. And if we try to go against it, it's pretty much futile. And we just fall down. So we can go ahead and fall down here onto this platform, and the goal is to just hookshot up to the other side before it's too late. Ah, dang it. <laughs> I extended the platform because it's needed. It's way too hard to jump across that while that's also moving. So we're going to go ahead and use the hookshot to grab onto these things, and pretty much just climb up to the top. I wish it wasn't so jittery, but you can only do so much with teleporting player an entire block each time. There we go. And, oh my god, I can't believe I got lost again. What did I miss? How did I- what? But I got the key down there. What key did I miss this time? It's not that one, because you need the long shot to get it. The second floor of the- oh no. Dang it. This water temple really is confusing. Holy cow. That's the second time in a different thing that I forgot, too. Alright, so we gotta lower the water temp temple- temperature, not the temperature, the water level. And there we go. And swim up here. There will be a bomb wall, which we'll throw a bomb at, and I believe it's just the chest that's in here. Yep. And there's the key. Okay. So we already accomplished this room, so let's just skip it. In goes the key. And just up there is the mini boss. We'll go ahead and shoot an arrow at the switch. Hook shot on over here. We can also use the hookshot to hit the switch if we're close enough. 
Hopefully this guy doesn't hit me. No! Let's try this again. So if we get on the very corner, we should be able to hit it. Yep. And I feel... No, I didn't. There we go. We'll hook shot on this side. And hit the switch again. Hook shot over here. And just gotta hit it two more times. I didn't mean to hit that with the fire arrow. Huh. Yeah, I'll keep it. <laughs> oh god. Okay. I really hate tech tights. And there we go. So we have a like like over here. We can either use that, which will make him end up eating us, or we can hookshot over to him, which also stuns him in the process. And here we are. The mini boss. I think I'm ready. I'm just gonna give myself some regeneration real quick to get back to full health. And here we go. So if we walk onto the water, you'll notice that we have a shadow. And if we go ahead and go to the other side, you'll notice that the door is locked, and if we stand on the sand and get off of it, our shadow is gone. We can stare at the tree and nothing's there. But as soon as we turn around, there he is. You approach him, and he attacks. So he will attack us, that's one of his normal moves. If we hit him, he'll either take damage, which he did, or respond to our attack with a shield, a back hop or a sword attack, which copies ours. And lastly, he can jump on our sword. So that you can either just try to brute force him, which doesn't necessarily work all the time. If you use the big Goron sword, you can prevent this attack right here from happening. But it's usually just a lot easier to use something like Dense Fire, because it attacks him and hurts him instantly. Ah! He tries to block it, but it is still damaging him. Uh, let's see, I believe these work against him. Yep, he is stunned. And we can attack him. I do need to make one little adjustment to that, he's not supposed to move there, but he is vulnerable when that happens. And there we go. I think that turned out pretty well. As far as most enemies go, Dark Link is definitely a lot more detailed, and... He actually has somewhat of an animation, so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And here, we get the long shot. Which ended up clearing both the hook shot and the long shot. Dang it! Okay. <laughs>